uh, as he has said, uh, and I quote him. You'll see the newspaper articles, and you'll see George Soros actually stating this. He says, Red China, or China in his words, uh, is the leader of the New World Order, will be the leader of the New World Order, I think his exact words are. And he said, and Americans better not resist. He's threatening us. Red China will be the leader of the New World Order, and Americans better not resist. These are his exact words. Of course, he also says the red Chinese currency, the yuan, will replace the dollar as the, the cardinal you know, currency on this planet. I think that's an interesting thing, too, because they are into currency manipulation. Now, one of the things I want people to understand is they have set everything up. We, we now have this incredible debt across the world. Uh, I believe it has now reached some $900 trillion, you know, the derivatives debt that was never cleared up. No, no, uh, it's, now, it could be $1.5 quadrillion. We don't know. It, 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 it could be. We don't, we don't know that. What we do know is that the money was literally transferred mainly from the citizens of the United States but also Europe and is now in the coffers of these giant banks, you know, a Hong Kong, Shanghai Bank, Dresdner, UBS, of course, Bank America, J.P. Morgan, City Corps, and all the others. So they have access to this money, but we, the little people, has been taken from us. Most, as I show the documentation in my video, Die America Die, over one half of all the mortgages in America are now underwater. Forty-six million Americans are now on uh, food stamps. Uh, we know for sure that in, in 2010, the statistics show that the, the true uh, inflation rate was 11.6%, but I believe it was even more than that. As far as 8.6% being the unemployment rate, you and I, again, know that it, it probably is in the range of 20 to 22%. But here's what I want to warn people of. Everything has been set up for what I call the coup de grace. The end of America. This is where this, this Hegelian process, the conflict of obstacles process, will end. And I am absolutely convinced at this time it will – you see, now, now we've been set up just perfectly so that our economy is, is teetering. We're on the edge of the abyss. But because of the ingenuity of the American people, for example, the iPhones, you know, the new communications devices, it's amazing how resilient we are. However, this, this gigantic – 900 trillion uh, or more debt problem is looking us in the face. And, of course, the Fed Reserve is the one that's printing electronically trillions of dollars and distributing them across the world. By the way, in my video, I actually show you the pages from the 266-page audit report of the Fed Reserve, the first ever audit report that, was, that came out this year since 1913 when the Fed uh, became a reality. But, but still, it's only a partial report. Now, thanks to Ron Paul, the senator, believe it or not, socialist senator Bernie Sanders, uh, and the Republican congressman who's unfortunately put out of office, Alan Grayson, these three were the big guys in getting, forcing the Fed to give us this partial report. I, I list, I show you pages from this uh, audit report, and you'll see that you know companies like uh, General Electric, Verizon, McDonald's, uh, over in Europe, we have BMW, Fiat, Volkswagen, we have foreign banks all over the world, and the Fed Reserve of the United States literally gave them, have, has given them, in this one report alone, they admit mm-hmm. $17 mm-hmm. trillion. Dollars. Mm-hmm. Sure, just gave it our, trillion. our money. Well, it's not really our money. It's money that doesn't exist and, and never will exist. They just made it up, but they're attaching they, they it to it us. Up, it, is, it, it did go in the accounts of these That's huge right. banks. Oh, sure. Now, here's, now, when I talk about conflict of opposites, I, I'm going to throw a little hammer in people's mind. Here's the Hegelian synthesis that's being achieved. You see, the great, the great thesis and antithesis uh, of the Zionist and the, the Illuminati elite of the New World Order is capitalism versus communism. But we're, when we talk about this, we're talking about the worst of capitalism. This is cartel, crony capitalism. You know, the kind where John D. Rockefeller of Standard Oil once said that competition is a sin. Well, this is the kind of capitalism we have. Now, it has been competing with communism, socialism, of the Soviet Union variety and the red Chinese variety. And now, with this decades, many decades long process of this, as Gorbachev called it, the conflict of opposites process, the same thing that gave us the French Revolution and the guillotine uh, all the way up to today, all these wars that we've had in the world and, and bloodshed, now comes the final end of the conflict of these two opposites, so that the role model, the nation that has been chosen to lead the world in the, in the New World Order is China, because it is a combination mm-hmm. of dictatorial communism mm-hmm. 
combined with the worst aspects of cartel crony capitalism. Right, they cobble together quite a monster, haven't they? They have cobbled together. Now, behind uh, China, of course, are the elite, the Rothschilds, uh, the others, uh, you know, the Zionists and so forth. And they helped Mao Zedong get to power. I show that in my video. Uh, Jewish uh, agents worked with Mao Zedong to set up mm -hmm. the communist system. Mm -hmm. Truman, who was a 33rd degree Freemason, yep. worked with them also uh, to bring about a communist revolution and victory in 1949. And so we're now at the – and then, of course, Kissinger – At the cost uh, of 50 million lives again. Absolutely. And Kissinger and all of his associates, Rockefellers and the Rothschilds, of course, finally then brought capitalism, crony capitalism of the Rockefeller variety, uh, Rothschild variety, to China and combined it with this Mao Zedong uh, 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 communism. So you have this horrible Frankensteinian monster. Now, I believe that what is going to happen, Jeff, and I, I'm going to predict this, is a horrible attack – on Iran and Syria, by the United States, with Israel's cooperation, of course, they will close the Straits of Hormuz for at least six months. Oh, yeah. Oil will go to $250 a barrel. Oh, yes. You're right. Our economies will be paralyzed. Gasoline will be 10 to $15. Yep. Our economy will go right out the tubes. There will be riches for British Petroleum, Rothschild, the Chinese oil company, which now owns the Iraqi oil. The Iraqi oil is being laundered into red China being brought by Rothschild oil ship tankers from the uh -huh. Mediterranean in uh -huh. Israel. And I show that in this video. Yeah, and the first the, time, first the time ever right. proven in a video. Uh, you'll, uh -huh. see the, you'll, you'll actually see the red Chinese oil workers mm -hmm. in the, working on the pipelines in mm -hmm. the oil fields mm -hmm. of Iraq. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Red Chinese. Mm -hmm. You'll also see the result. They're huge mines. Hey, and they don't worry about the environmental cleanup uh, in <laughs> Afghanistan. They're, they're bringing out the red Chinese, 300,000 mining workers. Yes. That's why we went to Afghanistan. They're bringing out aluminum, tin, copper, and they're they're what is it? Trillion, it trillion dollars, China. trillion dollars of uh, non-petroleum treasure sitting all over Afghanistan, and of course Iran, uh, its number one trading partner is is Red China. So hold on a second, Tex. We'll, we'll come right back. Right. Just uh, amazing things to consider. We've never seen anything like this on the world stage. Be right back. Okay, back with Tex Mars. Syria is about to be mutilated and dismembered. Uh, the troops are poised on the Turkey. Syria border, on the Jordanian Syria border, the U.S. Sixth Fleet is off the uh, coast of Syria uh, to its west. We are uh, looking at uh, another Libya. By the way, the leader of the so-called Free Syrian Army, I love these euphemisms, is none other than a fellow named Abdel Hakim Belhaj. Uh, companion companion uh, was one of his commanders of Osama bin Laden and historic leader of al-Qaeda in Libya who became the military governor of Tripoli. He is the military governor of Tripoli right now, as appointed and installed by NATO. Well, he is now on the Syrian border, Belhaj, to lead these uh, genocidal maniac hordes against the regime of Assad. Now, the only thing that remains to be seen here is will the Russians make good on their word? They said, yet, to the invasion and butchery of Syria. And they sent down up to 30 Yakant missiles. Now, if these missiles are used, the U.S. Sixth Fleet is going to suffer enormous damage. The George Herbert Walker Bush, our newest supercarrier, may well go to the bottom of the Atlantic. These are hypersonic anti-ship missiles, which cannot be stopped by any method we know. You fire half a dozen at a ship, you got one and a half seconds, apparently, after target acquisition to do something. Good luck. Put that on your stopwatch and, and count it. So, Belhaj is there to lead the hordes of, of rapists, murders, and butchers who absolutely rolled through Libya and did more damage than we'll ever know about, is there sitting now on the border with Turkey and uh, Syria and ready to uh, ready to rumble, as they say. For one know. thing, remember this, though. Uh, when, when we attack uh, Iran, uh, and if he, uh, Iran you know, moves very quickly, I don't think Iran has very much of a military capability, to be very honest with you. Uh, you know, even uh, Saddam Hussein held them off for several years there. Uh, and Iran still has a lot of the same old military equipment, hardware from the uh, Shah uh, era. However, they probably have enough to close the Straits of Hormuz, which will mean um, a, an economic catastrophe for the West, since 60 to 70 percent of the oil uh, has to go from the Persian Gulf through the Straits of Hormuz. If they bomb the ships there, close that up. And I'm talking about Iran doing that. That might be they might be capable of doing that, uh, and it would it would probably take six months or so to clean up. Uh, what you know, the, the debris of the ships that were right. sunk. Sure. Now, 
if that happens, Jeff, you and I know the, the price of oil oh, yeah. will, will skyrocket, mm-hmm. uh, and America will be – I mean, basically our economy, already precarious, and Europe's will be destroyed. However, it will mean incredible riches for Russia, because Russia uh, is in the top three oil producers of the world. They, some say they're now number one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then for China, mm-hmm. which gets all the oil now, uh, wor- working with BP, Rothschild's BP, from Iraq, which is the world's second largest oil producer. That's correct. So, uh, you know, if if this happens, it'll actually be a great boon for the Russian economy. Their whole economy is based on how much oil they produce and sell. Right. Uh, they do have some gold and some other minerals and things, but basically it's the oil. Well, it'll also, one other thing, Tex, and you know this, it'll enable the Rothschilds to come in and pick up at pennies on the dollar the wreckage of Europe and literally put it in its pocket. They'll absolutely. Just... There, there you go. Now now, now you're making great sense. Uh, and it's a horrible thing, but there'll be thousands of dead U.S. warriors, hundreds of thousands of dead Iranians, mostly civilian. Serious, the Orwellian serious. national security state can be fully implemented. And yeah. That has to be the reason for these FEMA camps uh, opening up now, this National Defense Authorization Act. The Internet Censorship Bill, they don't want people like you and I talking on the Wimps show. Um, and, and so we will just have the, the global police state. Here it is with China, the China model being implemented in America and throughout mm-hmm. Europe. Mm-hmm. Now, I, on I the other hand, yeah, Putin may surprise us all yeah. uh, and say, you know, take your riches and shove it. I'm not going to be – we're not going to be a tool. Right. We suffered under a Soviet communism. Yeah, well, they know all about the Bolsheviks. They sure do. So – uh, and they know it's the it's the Jews now. One of the things he did was uh, was it uh, Borisevsky that went to prison? Uh, or, or, Kord- you know, Kordakovsky is in prison. There you go. So, Berezovsky is uh, on the lam in London with his stolen hey, okay, billions. Good. Thank you for uh. correcting me on that. Yeah. So so Putin did move against. I remember one time he was being criticized by the Western yeah. press, right? Which uh, of course is basically well, he's being Zionist. criticized by the Zionist press. Yeah, exactly. And Putin said something that absolutely, I was flabbergasted. Here's what he said. He said, if you don't like the way Russia is run, he told the Western press at his press conference, tell you what I'll do. I'll just take you to one of our hospitals and give you a circumcision and send you home. Uh-huh. Now, I, don't, I don't know what he was saying there, but, I mean, to threaten, I'll, well, I'll just take you to the hospital here and give you a circumcision yeah. and send you home. I think he's talking maybe from the neck down. Uh-huh. Maybe, well, maybe so. But I thought, wow, that's quite a statement from a world leader. Uh we, we would like to see a Russia as the world champion. That, what a turnabout that would be. I do know he did that in the, in the nation of Georgia. Evidently, Cheney and Bush planned an attack on Iran, as you know, some years ago, uh, and they planned to use Georgia, the nation of Georgia, uh, and its puppet leader was a puppet to the United States and to Israel, uh, in fact was Jewish, if I can recall, uh, as a staging area, the nation of, of Georgia, which is very close in there to Iran. And, I mean, uh, you know, Putin fouled the whole thing up by sending Soviet uh, – not Soviet, but Russian – troops into Georgia. Uh, and remember conquering uh, the, those, that province uh, there on the border with Russia. So he he, he, he is much – it seems to be that Putin is much feared and hated by people like Netanyahu, Obama, and uh, the Bushes. Well, true. So it would be very interesting, but I do know this. I really believe this is their plan uh, is to drive up the price of oil. We saw what happened when oil – and was it 2008 hit $142 a barrel? Yeah. I mean, that was already we were suffering from the mortgage uh, bubble. And when they drove up, uh, you know, and, and I remember exactly who did it too, by the way. It was, it was Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. Uh, they drove these two huge investment banks, drove up the price of oil to $142. And I mean, the economies uh, of the whole world went south. But this time, if the Straits of Hormuz are closed, I can see oil going up to $250 a barrel. Oh, even higher. And what they always do is when it becomes open again, when they remove whatever wreckage is in there and the oil starts to flow again, the prices will come down, but never to where they were before <laughs> the door was closed. Never. That, that's right. Uh, and, and by the way, what, the interesting thing is there was a, an announcement today by the Environmental Protection Agency that they're going to – they're interpreting the 1969 law difference. Uh, and now they're, they're giving themselves triple – probably triple the power – uh, that they've been exercising, they call it. They're going to use um, environmental sustainability, uh, and, and they're going to actually just reinterpret all of the environmental regulations and make them tougher. Now, one of the things that's happening is that, uh, believe it or not, and your audience may not have heard this, uh, but the United States is awash in petroleum. It seems that we have now discovered, thanks to again good old American ingenuity, 
we now have more oil in our nation in reserves than any country on earth. It's been found, you know, in the Bakken uh, oil formation up in the, the Dakotas and Montana. Uh, there was a uh, an oil uh, expert uh, I, I saw on local television here in Austin, Texas. I heard it on the radio uh, mainly also the same statement by the guy. He says that oil companies and people have never, ever in their life seen an oil field like has been discovered south of San Antonio here in Texas. It's called the Austin Chalk Formation. Well, there's another new one, see, another one in Colorado, the one on Gull Island in Alaska, and they tracked uh, off the coast of Louisiana, which has more oil sitting there than has ever been used since the dawn of petroleum began. There is oil. We don't need any foreign oil. We are loaded for half a millennium or more. It's absurd. Now you're right. However, thus comes the Environmental Protection Agency, and they want. I believe that the, the plan is to shut off the American oil. We, we will not be allowed to drill for our own oil and gas. Oh, no, we that haven't will been. Force right. us, that, yeah. that will force us, Jeff, to yeah. go to China that now has is, is laundering all of the uh, Iraqi oil and, and to uh, BP, for example, sure. in Israel. Of course, buy it from them. Yep. So yep. Th- this is what they want us to do. They want to, you know, it, it's almost like owning a gold mine, but they're putting a gate up and say you can't enter it. Even if it's on your land, we're not going to let you go in there and mine for gold. That's this is exactly what they're doing right. in America now. Uh, and, and, of course, uh, horrible things have happened with other sources. Wind and solar basically are dead. Uh, nuclear, after what happened in Japan, well, you know what? Oh, it ought to be I, dead. And I wonder about that. After all, Israeli well, security yeah. was taken care of the place. Uh, I don't know. I, I, all I know is they, uh, they're they lying to the Japanese people. Millions are going to die. Over here in the States, 14,000 Americans have now admittedly died as a direct result of the is Fukushima right? radiation. Yes. Oh, the Fukushima radiation. Well, Where you know, I, I live, here, I live yeah. here in South Texas, and my physician, who, by the way, used to not even believe in these kind of things, but, uh-huh. I mean, he, he is recommending to me to use iodine and oh, he's yeah. telling he, – yeah. and I can't believe it. This is a guy who used to be an AMA-type doctor. I yeah. got gotcha. you. Well, so the light bulbs came on somehow there. The light bulbs came on. That's Text, right. uh, You know, one of the things that sort of broke my heart on this video was the title. Uh, really, until, oh, oh about a month before – you know, we released this. I kept thinking about that title because I don't like to think about America dying. Now, who does? Exactly. And so I said, "Die, America, die." Oh, I don't, I don't like that. But on the other hand, this is really a warning video, isn't it? It's, it's something where we tell people, "Look, we're going to give you 80 minutes of unvarnished truth, stuff you won't hear anywhere else." Uh, I thank God. Uh, you know, maybe like a, a, a miniature Tim Tebow for giving me this information, but also so many people, hundreds. You know how much material you get, too, from people. And then, of course, you go one step further than me because you put it on your website so we can all read it and all learn from rich.com. But in any case, uh, I didn't like the title, but I thought, you know what? This is true. There is a, an ongoing murder and assassination. And when I say America, I mean everyone listening to our voices, Jeff. Right, sure. This is, this is us. This is, mm-hmm. this is our country. We've been bathed and immersed in it. You can't get it out of our, our system till the day we die, and and so, therefore, it's extremely important. But more than that, I ask myself, can we somehow save the last vestiges of it? And and I don't know why. Maybe I'm too optimistic, but one way or another, I believe that Americans are going to come to the fore. Not all Americans. It never has been all. It never has no, been It doesn't take fore. all, you know? There you go. It doesn't take all. I do think, though, it's the, just what we've accomplished so far. How is it possible that just a small handful of websites and talk show hosts, you know, the Jeff Rinses of this world, there are not very many of them, you know, count you on two hands. But how, how is it that y'all have, well, let's just face it, Jeff, you're just a big troublemaker. <laughs> Glad of it. Yeah. And you too. <laughs> but what, what a troublemaker. What, what a yeah. difference. And I think everybody out there knows what I'm talking about. And every time somebody calls and says, you know, I'm just being persecuted for telling people about this, I say go right on, keep going. You're you're yeah. you're having a, a big impact. You know, Jeff. I'm going to ask your opinion on something because you, you really know uh, the political world. I was reading today that uh, the Republican establishment, not mm-hmm. to mention mm-hmm. the Democratic, uh, you know, party and such, mm-hmm. they are getting ready to blast the Dickens out of Ron Paul mm-hmm. if he wins the Iowa primary, and he mm-hmm. looks like he just might do that yeah. and shock everybody. Gingrich is falling uh, into a hole there. His ratings are plummeting. It's amazing what Paul has done. Go ahead, please. Well, here's my here's my point about this. Uh, in other words, they're going to do everything they can. They're going to call him a KKKer and a militia guy and 
Well, a work, but they, they will, sure. Yeah, they're going to do everything they can to stop this guy because, I mean, he really is trouble because he really does want to return us to the Constitution uh, and do what's right by America. They cannot allow that. They hate this guy. They despise him. Uh, they'll lie. They'll cheat. But, uh, you know, think of that old saw, which is true, that first they ignore you, and then what's the next step? They uh, they make fun of you, yeah. call you a kook or a nut. Right. And then finally, when you've really been effective and they're mm-hmm. frightened of you, they attack you. Yeah. And then the next yeah. step, of course, is you win. Yeah. Well, I think they they try to ignore him, although they still try to do that. They're still at it. Uh, yeah, yeah CNN still- story the other day after the debate, 27 paragraphs, I counted it. Ron Paul was mentioned once in paragraph 9, and that was that all right? I could find. Yeah. Well, I was listening to Bill O'Reilly of the O'Reilly Factor on Fox. And I, I turned to Wanda, my, my wife, you know, right before we, he came on. I said, Wanda, I'll bet you he will not mention the new polls that came out today that show Ron Paul leading. And, and he, he won't even mention Ron Paul in terms of the polls. Let's watch and see. This is true. Wanda's my witness on this now. You know? uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and he came on, and he said basically something like this. Well, he said, we have, we have the new polls. In fact, we had the Gallup poll today, said Bill O'Reilly. Uh, and Romney has, is now ahead of uh, Gingrich, Gingrich by just a few points. Mm-hmm. That was his report. Mm-hmm. Romney is now ahead <laughs> of Gingrich by yeah. just a few points. Yeah. No mention of Ron Paul no. leading both of them. Of course. It, it was like, you know, I, I figure when Ron Paul wins, the New York Times will probably report, Jeff, and say uh, Romney second. Comes in second. No, that'll be yeah. their lead. Romney <laughs> second. And then about the fifth paragraph, they'll mention that who, who won it. <laughs> right. No, you're right. It's, it's amazing. But now, there's some things I know in my video, when, when you could ask the, the top base reporter of the Chicago Tribune or Newsweek Times some of the things in my video that actually – were not that difficult for me to, to find out about, to discover, just by going to Google and reading, uh, you know, London newspapers and right. uh, newspapers from uh, Bombay and all kinds of places. You can find out in all this information that's not reported in America. We have the most controlled press yeah. uh, in the United States. And, of course, even Moscow, you know, Press TV of Russia, they, they do a lot better job of covering things. RTV. Uh, RT. R- R- okay, RT. Thank you. And uh, they do a lot better job. For example, in, in my video... Uh, you know, I have pictures of Hillary at the new GM car plant, General uh-huh. Motors. Uh-huh. Now, remember, we all saved General Motors, did we not? We certainly did. I mean, we, you know, gave them this tarp money and everything. And yep. and, and so Hillary, it, I think it was wonderful. Now they're, now they're thriving. They're doing better. And she was visiting a new GM General Motors plant. And, and you know, where they just hired thousands of workers, and there were GM's newest cars coming off the the thing. Now, this is in my video, right? <laughs> but yeah. here's the kicker. Here's the kicker. Uh-huh. The plant, uh-huh. which was paid for by $3 billion of American yep. taxpayers' money, is yep. in yep. Uzbekistan. Yep. Not I know. A- <laughs> I know. Amazing. There's a huge Ford plant down in Brazil. It's fully automated. It's amazing. State of the art. Uh, yes, I knew where you are going with that. The American press is not only controlled, but it is staffed by the most cowardly, uninformed pseudo-journalists in the history of this country, period. And it is also so sad to hear you say Ron Paul wants to return to the Constitution. How can it be, dear friends, that we are in this year, nearly into 2012, talking about trying to reclaim and return to a constitutional republic? How can it be? It is. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Talking to Tex Mars, my brand new documentary. Die, America, die, which is the wish, of course, of the controllers. Now, one of the most visible arms, not a major arm, but most visible arms of the control mechanism, of course, is the phony, the fraud, the illegal president of the, well, the formerly United States, Barack Hussein Obama, or whatever his name is. I want to play a little something. For, I, want to, I want you to understand the word arrogance. Perhaps like some of you may have never heard it from a president before. We all understand arrogance, but you got to get this one. Some of you may have seen this. 60 Minutes, Barack Obama. Now, just listen to this guy. As I, we all know what he has done to demolish this country. All right, now, just check this out. As you said yourself, Steve, um, you know, I, I would put our legislative and foreign policy accomplishments in our first two years against any president, uh, uh, with the possible exceptions of Johnson, FDR, and Lincoln, but, uh, uh, you know, just in terms of what we've gotten done in modern history. Now, did you get that, folks? He said, I'm a better president than George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Teddy Roosevelt, Truman, Reagan, 
and all the rest. He's number five in American history in his mind. We've gotten more done in our first two years. We've gotten more done in our first two years, he should have said, in terms of demolishing this country and installing a Bolshevik fascist, and I know the two words aren't supposed to go together, but they do, combine than anyone could have done. And that's the truth. We cannot tolerate four more years of this, this so-called leadership. It isn't him. It's the people behind him. He's mouthing their policies. And their policies are, die, America, die. Sounds like it, doesn't it, Tex? Well, it, it does. And, you know, the, the amazing thing is he's claiming to be more successful in his foreign policy than anyone uh, in history except Johnson, Lin Lyndon B. Johnson. Lyndon Johnson. He's one of the greatest failures. Greatest uh, criminal uh, failure uh, in American foreign policy history. Took us to uh, war in Vietnam, escalated the war, directly responsible for the death of 65,000 American young men. 65,000 and the maiming of, of hundreds of thousands more, and the massacre of between two and three million Vietnamese civilians and soldiers. And he lost, and he lost the war, besides. He absolutely he got his, his butt kicked. Yeah, and, uh, of course, uh, we had no reason to be in the war in the first place. None. Uh, and, and we were, you know, we, he moved it from, uh, I think, 20,000 advisors and such under Kennedy to uh, half a million or so by Correct. the time uh, yeah. we had lost the war. Uh, the, the interesting thing, too, is the next guy is FDR, he mentioned. Franklin Roosevelt, who yeah, was not only about? a socialist communist. World War II? Got Anybody? World War II. Fifty million people died around the world. Uh, and then after World War II, he put in place a plan uh, th that would uh, allow the Soviet Union and the communists to gobble up about 30 nations. Yeah. That was FDR. Then and the then third guy was Lincoln, who got Abe us Lincoln. into the uh, greatest uh, – you know, he was president, and rather than seeking uh, peace and, uh, and, and dialogue with the South, he ended up uh, massacring – Killing, and uh, he used such techniques of warfare. Yeah. Uh, you know, bombing, uh, shelling, and uh, cities, destroying cities, killing men, women, and children. Yep. Uh, you know, we used they, they were, at the time it was believed the a real war. Gentlemen uh, fought, you know, soldier to soldier. But there they started killing men, no. women, and children. The other forces. So you know, I'm, I'm I'm just trying to say. Amazing that, three people he put himself great with. The parallel yeah. that he had there mm -hmm. was astonishing. Well, one of the things of die America die. I have pictures of Obama. Visiting China with uh, John Huntsman, who's now running for president. Huntsman and he are standing at the Great Wall of China with uh, their vice president over there. So, you know, Huntsman, of course, is a big kiss-up to a red China. Well, he was uh, the ambassador to, to China in, in Beijing. Yeah, he's Obama's ambassador. It's interesting. The Huntsman Oil Company uh, is, an, is an interesting company. How they've grown bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, you know, I went back and uh, visited my little hometown of Port Natchez, Texas, uh, uh, just a few weeks ago. Uh, and there we had... There's, I mean, factories galore. We don't call them factories. We call them chemical refineries, oil refineries everywhere. Uh, it's down there in the petrochemical area, Port Arthur, Beaumont, Houston, and we're right in the middle of it. Uh, and it used to just be thick with pollution when I was a kid. You know, you'd smell the, the chemicals and the oil everywhere. But I noticed the huge oil tank farm that had one time been owned by Exxon uh, now has the big Huntsman label on the side. Oh, right. He's doing quite well, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, that Utah... Mormon family, the Huntsman are there. They're doing good in the oil business. Uh, so, I, by the way, others, though, uh, that I show in Die America Die, you'll see Senator Chuck Schumer, Senator Missouri Senator Claire McGaskill, Maurice Strong, the Bushes. Uh, of course, Henry Paulson, who was uh, George W. Bush's uh, Secretary of the Treasury, who basically sold us down the river uh, when the uh, current recession or depression, as it really is, hit us. Uh, I'll show you in this video, Die America Die, that Paulson is so fascinated and enraptured over the communist red Chinese, he has visited 74 times. Wow. And by the way, that includes not only his Treasury Secretary. That's an incredible number of trips. Jeez. Yeah, and, and uh, that also includes some of the trips he made as, as Goldman Sachs uh -huh. CEO. Yep, yep, he, was, yep, yep. he was head of Goldman Sachs. Timothy Geithner, whose father was head of the Ford Foundation for Asia, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know Obama's grandmother worked at a Hawaii bank, so she was part of the banking deal. She was an investment banker, and the mother did uh, work for the Ford Foundation at one point, as I yeah, recall. Yeah, his mother did, too, in Indonesia, and she worked for the Ford Foundation. That's right. All right. And, by the way, Tim Geithner speaks perfect Mandarin uh, that's, Chinese. That uh, should tell us an awful lot. Hang on, text. Just a moment. We have to pause. Visiting with And, again, you can order his video. Go look at the trailer. 
Uh, it's just uh, it's just a knockout, boom, 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 thing after thing that uh, is really important. And and many of them, of course, as I mentioned, are completely unknown to many of the names you see attached to the columns and the so-called mainstream media. Ugh, they are they are just dumb. And most of them, of course, afraid of their own shadows. They step out of line, and there's the door. And there are 5,000 people waiting to take their place. So they, they, they don't even have to be told what to do. They know how to play the game to stay alive in that business. So anyway, go ahead, Tex. Well, what, maybe the short time we have left, I'd, I'd really like to tell people about, I call it the gathering storm. You know, in, in the video, I take them and show them all of the forces uh, that are murdering America. Uh, and as George Soros, the Rothschild agent uh, in uh, Europe and the United States, Hungarian Jew, uh, as he has said, uh, and I quote him, you'll see the newspaper articles and you'll see George Soros actually stating this. He says, Red China, or China in his words, uh, is the leader of the New World Order, will be the leader of the New World Order, I think his exact words are. And he said, and Americans better not resist. He's threatening us. Red China wow. will be the leader of the New World wow. Order, wow. and Americans better not resist. These yeah. are his exact words. Of course, he also says the red Chinese currency, the yuan, will replace the dollar as the, the cardinal you know, currency on this planet. 